All right, so here's a lesson for 6-2 different forms of quadratics. So there are three different forms of quadratics that we're going to look at. Um, we're familiar with two of them, and then one of them might be somewhat new. Um, the two that we're familiar with is factored form and standard form. Uh, in the previous unit, we learned how to take a quadratic and write it in factored form, but we also learned how to take something written in factored form and multiply it to make it uh, into standard form. The new form that we're going to talk about is vertex form, which looks like this, a equals x minus h squared plus k. So first, let's take a closer look at vertex form. In the previous uh, lesson, we learned how to get characteristics based off of a graph. But in this lesson, we're going to learn how to get characteristics based off of an equation. So um, the letters A, H, and K are going to tell us something about our graph. Okay, so first, let's start with A. A tells us the concavity. So concavity is whether it's um, facing up or facing down. So when A is greater than 0, aka we have a positive A value, our graph is concave up. When A is less than 0, meaning we have a negative A value, our graph is concave down. Okay, the next thing um, about our uh, equation here is H is going to tell us two things. It's going to tell us the x-coordinate of our vertex. Which is actually also going to be our axis symmetry. Okay, however, one thing we need to remember, and this is remembering from our circles unit, so since inside the parentheses it says x minus h, it's going to be the opposite sign. So change the sign of the number inside the parentheses. So if this says x plus 2, h would be negative 2. If it said x minus 2, it would be h was equal to positive 2. Okay, then the last letter here, k, is going to give us the y-coordinate of our vertex. Okay, since that's on the outside and it says plus k, it's going to be the same sign um, as whatever it is. Okay, so let's look at this example. So a in this problem is equal to 2. h in this problem is equal to positive 4 because it's the opposite sign. And then k is going to be negative 2. So based off these values, we should be able to get the concavity, the vertex, and the axis symmetry. So concavity, we look at the value of a. And since a is positive, we know it's concave up and which we can see from the graph. Okay, now our vertex is just going to be h comma k. So it's going to be 4, negative 2. And then lastly, our axis of symmetry is just the x coordinate of our vertex, so that's just going to be x equals 4, which we can see all of these things on our graph. Our vertex is 4, negative 2. Our axis of symmetry is this line right here, x equals negative 4, and as we can see, it's obviously concave up. All right, so now let's take a look at factored form. So this is something that we're familiar with. We saw this in the previous unit um, when we learned how to factor. But again, uh, each letter is going to tell us something different about our graph. So starting with concavity, um, and this is the easy one because concavity is going to be the same for all the different forms. A is always going to tell us our concavity. So just like before, if we have A is greater than 0, meaning we have a positive A value, we know it's concave up. And if A is less than 0, meaning we have a negative A value, then it's concave down. Okay, our x-intercepts are zeros. This is going to relate to what we talked about in our previous unit. So we learned how to solve a quadratic, and we learned that when we solve a quadratic, those are actually the x-intercepts of our graph. So in order to find our x-intercepts, we're going to use zero product property. Um, and we're basically going to set our parentheses. So we're going to say x minus r1 is equal to 0, and x minus r2 is equal to 0, and we solve for x. And that's going to give us our x-intercepts. Okay, then with the uh, calculating, this is kind of like a bonus feature, but we are going to have to calculate it. So here's what we need to understand. When we have a parabola, all right, and say that our parabola has our two x-intercepts here, our axis of symmetry is always going to be in the middle 
of our x-intercepts. So our axis of symmetry is always in the middle of our x-intercepts. So we should be able to find our axis of symmetry by finding the midpoint of our x-intercepts. So our axis of symmetry, it's going to be the midpoint of our x-intercepts. And the way that we're going to calculate that, actually let me use a different color. is we're going to take our x-intercepts, which I'm just going to call x, or actually I'll call um, r1 plus r2, because those stand for roots, and we're going to divide it by 2. So our x-intercepts here is r1, r2, so that stands for roots. So this is finding the midpoint of x-intercepts. And we'll look at an example in a second. So once we have our axis of symmetry, to find our vertex, we know that the uh, x value of our vertex is the axis of symmetry. To find the y value of the vertex, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in AOS to equation for x. That's going to give you the y value of the vertex. So let's look at an example to make it a little bit easier to understand. So starting with here, we have f of x equals x minus 1, uh, x plus 3. So our a value in this case is equal to 1. Uh, since there's no number in front of our parentheses, but we know that it's positive, which means we're going to be concave up. Okay, to find our zeros, uh, we basically need to solve two equations. We need to say x minus 1 is equal to 0, and then we have x plus 3 is equal to 0. Well, that means x is going to equal to 1, and x is equal to negative 3. So our zeros are going to be written as ordered pairs. So it's going to be 1 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. So there's my x-intercepts. So now to find our axis of symmetry, we're going to use this formula here. We're going to add our x-intercepts and divide by 2. That's going to find the midpoint. So my x-intercepts are 1 and negative 3, so 1 plus negative 3, and we're going to divide that by 2. So 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2, and negative 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. So now that I have my axis of symmetry, I actually have half of my vertex. So my vertex we know is going to be negative 1 comma something. So to find the y value of the vertex, we're going to take our axis of symmetry, and we're going to plug it in for x here. Okay, so I'm going to do that work a little bit lower here. So to find this value, we're going to plug in negative 1. So using the notation of plugging it in, this is what it looks like. It says f of negative 1, that means plug in negative 1 for x. So negative 1 minus 1, and negative 1 plus 3. So pulling up my calculator here. negative 1 minus 1, and then I have negative 1 plus 3. So when we plug that in, we get negative 4. So that means the y value of my vertex is negative 4, and now I have my vertex. So let's just check using our graph. It's concave up. I have x-intercepts at negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. And my vertex is negative 1, negative 4. So let me just do one more example. Um, this isn't in your notes, but one more example just to make sure we got it. Got it. So concavity, this is A. We know our concavity is going to be down since A is negative. My zeros, I have x plus 3 is equal to 0, and I have x plus 7 is equal to 0. So I have x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 7. So my zeros are going to be negative 3, 0, and negative 7, 0. Now to calculate my axis of symmetry, it's going to find the midpoint of these two numbers. So negative 3 plus negative 7 divided by 2. Well, negative 3 plus negative 7 is negative 10, over 2 is negative 5. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. That means I have half of my vertex. To find the other half, we're going to plug in negative 5 into our equation here. 
So negative 2, parentheses, negative 5 plus 3, negative 5 plus 7. So using my calculator, negative 2, and then negative 5 plus 3, and then negative 5 plus 7, which equals 8. So my vertex, the y value of my vertex is going to be 8. So my vertex is negative 5 comma 8. All right, now looking at a couple of the homework problems. So starting with number 1, it says for each quadratic, identify the following characteristics, concavity, axis symmetry, and vertex. So concavity, we look at the value of A, and A is positive, which means we're concave up. Uh, for B, axis symmetry, x equals, remember this is h, but it's the opposite side. So that's going to be a positive 3. So that's going to be my axis symmetry. And then c is going to be my vertex. My vertex we know is h comma k. So h is positive 3, k is negative 4. So my vertex is going to be 3, negative 4. All right, number 6, the features that we're identifying is concavity. So starting with concavity, uh, this is positive, which means it's concave up. B, we're identifying the x-intercepts. So to figure out the x-intercepts, we got to do x plus 1 is equal to 0 and x minus 4 is equal to 0. So I have x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 4. So my zeros are going to be negative 1, 0, and 4, 0. C, we're going to find our axis of symmetry. So to find our axis of symmetry, we're going to add our x-intercepts and divide by 2. Um, so negative 1 plus 4 divided by 2 to find the midpoint. So that's negative 3 over 2, or sorry, positive 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So my axis of symmetry is 1.5. And then lastly, for the vertex, if we have our axis of symmetry, we have half of our vertex. And to find the other half, we're going to plug in 1.5 in for x here. So I'm going to do 1.5 plus 1 times 1.5 minus 4. And that's going to give me the y value of my vertex. So that's negative 6.25. So my vertex is going to be 1.5 comma negative 6.25.